What's happening, webheads? Guys, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. It's not really New Comic Book Day. It's kind of New Comic Book Day because it's Tuesday. But uh, I'm in the area of the comic shop. I had to stop at Target. And you know what? I'm going to stop by the shop and I'm going to pick up a few things that was released today. We're going to make this a two-day comic book haul. All right, webheads. So here we go. The two-day haul spectacular. Guys, this is Spider Slayer's Comic Book Haul, episode 584. And this is where I share with you what I pick up at my LCS, which is Comic Central located in the city of Sanford. So if you guys are ever in the area, guys, make sure you stop by. Tell Mike Spider Slayer sent you. You'll get a mysterious black bag and inside will be the comics that you purchased. That's right, guys. They're a great shop. Great variety. So here we go. Day one. Comic books. So inside are these books. We're going to show off the first thing I wound up getting. I saw this last week. It was still there this week. And I decided to get this Spider-Woman issue 20. How awesome is this comic book cover, man? Spider-Woman at last, face-to-face -face with Spider-Man. What a classic, iconic cover. This book was made back in November of 1979. This is a Mark Grunwald story, Frank Springer and Mike Esposito arc. Uh, and this is the first meeting of Spider-Man and Spider-Woman, origin of Spider-Woman retold. And the grade on this comic book is a 9 Point four. That is a great comic, man. Absolutely am so excited to have this in the collection. Just such a great cover. Oh my gosh. So really cool. Not a bad grade for such an old ass comic, right? All right. So what's the other stuff that I wound up picking up today? Well, as you can imagine, it's probably a lot of the DC stuff because on Tuesdays, that's when DC is released. So the first thing we got is the Donis DC Premiere. This should be free at your local comic book shop. So make sure that you wind up getting this because it has everything that is coming out with the Dawn of DCU. It gives you a little bios of your favorite superheroes. And I think this is a very cool promotional piece. And if you wanna know more about your characters, there you go, absolutely for free. So with that, I wound up getting the uh, there was a foil edition of this comic book as well. So I was like, okay, that's pretty neat. So, and it has a, a, a like a story behind it. So Don, a DC premiere special edition. And you know, like I said, same thing. It's got all the bios and all that other stuff. So it's foil. So you can pay for that one. Next, I wound up getting Batman and Superman's World's Finest. This is issue 15. Uh, this continues the story of Metamorpho. So now we have the Vengeance of Ultra Morpho. So Dan Mora's artwork continues to be so impressive in this comic book, man. So good. Absolutely love this story. I love how the characters are so like emotionally driven and they just are attached to each other oh dude i cannot spoil this page but this looks awesome oh my gosh this is why this book is on my top three list every single week it comes out oh my god you guys are gonna love this comic book then we have batman the brave and the bold so i thought i guess i heard this is an ongoing and I guess it's supposed to replace Batman Urban Legends, which I'm not a fan of. I didn't know that. So there's going to be different stories in here. You know, if those stories are going to be any good, it's still yet to be determined. And if it's going to be this pricey every month, uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue it. I forgot that this was actually coming out, but this is an $8 comic. So for me to buy this every month, those stories got to be really good. I don't know. We'll see how this uh, turns out here. Then I wound up getting Batgirls issue 18 only because of the cover, not because I read it. It's a absolutely gorgeous cover right there. Man, oh man, that's great. 
but let's check out the artwork anyway. This series is ending. I read the first couple issues of it, and I just wasn't a fan of it. I heard that it's been getting better as time goes along, but again, too little, too late. The series is ending. All right, and then... We have 799 of the Flash Jeremy Adams story as it continues as his uh, little baby was most recently born and he's going on some crazy adventure that's taking him through time and space and all kinds of crazy stuff. The last story is almost over my head, but the baby was abducted by Granny. So, I don't know. We'll see. But, nevertheless, it doesn't matter anyway. Jeremy Adams' run, unfortunately, is ending. And uh, we're going to get a new writer on the book. But, hey, it looks good, man. And a monitor's there. So, I don't know. We'll see. Then, we have the second issue of Superboy, The Man of Tomorrow. First issue is really great as we have Superboy as he's looking for his own place to actually save. He goes to this other world and then he has to uh, do battle with these, uh, oh my God, I totally forgot what they were. Uh, and they were attacking him and whatnot. And it was, it was a pretty fun issue. Like it was a lot better than uh, than I thought it was going to be. The artwork is pretty good in it. So yeah, looking forward to the second issue. Hopefully it delivers. And then we got Dawn of DC Superman. This is issue four. This is the story where we have uh, all these different versions of kryptonite that are attached to some hand. It's called Cut Down by the Kryptonite Claw. So I don't know what's going on. We got this super corp situation going on. The last story had to do with, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Man, I can't. Parasite. There we go. Parasite. So that's over. And now, again, this story continues with, you know, Superman teaming up with Lex Luthor here. Uh, I love all the different characters. I love the artwork in here. So looking forward to this new story arc. All right. And then we got this book, which I don't know. I have no idea what to expect. The Visual. Uh, this is issue one. Just bought it because it's a new issue one, and it's like I gotta talk about it on Worthy One so you guys can make a decision if you wanna purchase it or not. Here is the artwork inside. So here we go. So, yep, yeah, there's that. And then we wind up getting the uh, uh, Superman issue four, the Lee Bermenho foil variant, which looks absolutely outstanding. This was on my top 10 comic book covers of the week, and this was my number one favorite comic book cover. I knew this was going to be foil, and it looks great, man. It's so good. I love the detail. I love the facial expression there by Lois. It's a awesome comic book cover. All right, and then last but not least, we got the, another new number one from DC Comics, guys. Titans issue one done by Tom Taylor. I'm holding my breath on this one. I'm cautiously optimistic about it, but we're going to see what this has to offer. The art is done by Nicholas Scott. Uh, here's the opening page here. Titan's Tower. Uh, I hope he has a really good story to tell. You know, we'll see. We'll really absolutely see here. We got Raven and Beast Boy kissing right off the start. And then we got a big King Kong creature, you know, destroying a power plant. So, I don't know, man. We'll see. But... I'm excited, and there was day number one. So for right now, I'm gonna leave you with those Facebook group page shout outs. First shout out of the day goes to Brett. He was going through his Spider-Man short box, and he goes, you know, are these big issues or something? Yeah, I would say so. 298, 299, 300, 301, Spider-Man issue one, the silver, and then Web of Spider-Man issue one. Great comics obviously some of my favorite jonathan says i love ollies he got uh hardcovers trade paperbacks four dollars six dollars nine dollars i went recently to ollies and checked out some of the stuff they had yeah you cannot beat those prices congratulations jonathan on those fines then we have brendan who said well, the disappointment I had from a reading Amazing Spider-Man 25 have subsided thanks to Jeremy Adams' Green Lantern issue 1. What a perfect way to kickstart the title. Who knows, after Amazing Spider-Man issue 26, we may very well find ourselves begging Jeremy Adams to do the same for Spidey. What would you guys think about that? Hey man, that 
probably could be cool. But man, I gotta show off that awesome Green Lantern you have. Thanks, Brendan, for sharing. Then we have Katie who says, say no to drugs and sniff a comic book. You gotta love the smell of those classic comics, man. I actually did a series where I bought dollar books and smelled each and every one of those comics. But dude, seriously, it was getting me sick and I had to stop. So if you guys want to get shouted out on future hauls, guys, check out Facebook and search for my group called Comic Book Corner 2.0 Web Hedge Unite. You just got to answer a few questions followed by the rules, guys, and then you will have access to this awesome community where everybody talks about their comics that they picked up for the week. You know, new comic book day hauls, CGC grades or CBC ads grades, comic book rooms, sharing just posters, their thoughts on the issues in general. Guys, it's a lot of fun. And like I said earlier, you never know when you could get shouted out in future hauls. Good morning, guys. It's day two. I just got to the comic shop. It's about 10 minutes before the shop opens. I'm pretty exhausted. I was up late last night doing the comic book weekly live stream talking about that crazy Spider-Man news. So, yeah, it was it was some big time news and uh, it was an awesome live stream. But uh, I'm going to go in that shop in a few minutes and we're going to show you what I picked up on day two. All right, guys, so just walked out of there. Here we go, mysterious black bag. Let's show you some of the stuff I got today. And today I wound up picking up some more back issues because, you know, back issues are awesome. So the first thing I wound up getting today was Marvel Team Up featuring Spider-Man and Iron Man, my two favorite Marvel characters right here. Issue 51, it's a high grade copy, looks really good. Uh, love the cover art on here. So, so happy to add that one to the collection. Then, of course, I've been finding a lot of Iron Man this year and I'm trying to collect the entire run and I wound up getting issue 52 of the series. So, I don't think I have this particular one. It's in a little bit of a rough, rough shape. Paid $6 for this comic. Cool cover there as he's rescuing that person. So, I don't even know who that is. But then we wind up getting issue 59. So we have this one right here. That's pretty cool. Uh, he's, he's doing battle against Firebrand. I didn't even know that this guy was around back then, back in, uh, back in the day. So that's an older book. And then I got issue 66, which this is a really high grade copy uh, of this uh, comic book where we have Iron Man facing Thor here. So yeah, this book is definitely like, I don't know, man, at least like 9-2 material, at least. This is a great looking book. So happy to definitely have this one in the collection. Love how those two are fighting each other. And then I wound up getting issue 96, mainly a cover by. That is a beautiful cover right there. So cool. All right, so that was all the back issues I bought today. And now we'll go on to the rest of the new comics that didn't come out yesterday. So let's check those out. Mysterious Black Bag, like number two for today. So there was one DC book that I did forget to pick up last week. Or I mean, sorry, yesterday. <laughs> it was Cyborg. This is issue one. Um, you know, I'm not a huge Cyborg fan, but I was like, you know what? It's number one. I'm going to check it out. The Donna DC U stuff has been actually pretty good. So let's check it out, right? Then we go on to some independents. We have the Lost Barbarians. Uh, this is issue, what are we on on this one? Issue four. So pretty cool story. I've been enjoying it. Check out that artwork right from the start. Two page spread right there. And I love seeing this. Uh, this uh, venture that Silv is going on currently right now, protecting this this little boy that has these magic powers. So that's been a pretty good uh, fantasy-like adventure. I'm really looking forward to the second issue here of The Seasons Have Teeth. It's a cool variant cover for the series. Um, here's some more of the interior artwork. 
Last time we got a hold of spring, uh, which was an entity of, of a season. And now we're gonna be touching on uh, summer. So that will be cool. And I can't wait to see how these things came to be, right? We learned about our main character on who he was, how his wife died, what he does, and stuff like that. Uh, this had to be on my FOC because I did not like the first issue of this. And this is uh, 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 the giant Goku or Goku or whatever it is. It's the gigantic uh, Godzilla-like creature that likes to hump buildings. Uh, but yeah, and I'm lucky I did not show you this <laughs> this page right here because not only is this guy humping buildings, but there's people doing it in the book as well. So this book definitely pushes, you know, an agenda here also. But uh, this artwork here, I can I can show you <laughs> here. I did not expect to open up to that. So yeah, there's that book. So we'll see how the second issue goes. Uh, but a book I know for sure that is awesome is The Dark Ride. Joshua Williamson, this this book has great characters. Love the story about this haunted amusement park and this girl's brother wound up getting murdered at the park and she's doing investigation here. Really great story, learning about the history of the family and whatnot, great stuff. Always will recommend it. The first trade is for sale. You guys can catch up super easy there. Then we have X-Men issue 22. Uh, jumping back on board with this, this was crossing over with Captain Marvel. So now I'm, I'm, I'm you know, giving it a try once again because there's this Orcus storyline that's gonna be going on. Looks like we got these that, those plant ladies or whatever it is, I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. It's got MODOK in the book. Uh, I just have not been enjoying X-Men for a long time, but I feel like I almost have to read it just to at least keep up of what's going on in the X-Men world. Currently, are you guys reading X-Men? Let me know in those comments below. Cool cover though. And then we have Venom issue 19, decided to go with the Spider-Verse variant. I thought that one was kind of cool. I think this one is playing off the heels of the, no, maybe it's not. I thought it was, you know, playing off the heels of the free comic book day issue, but I guess it's not. It's got Gold Goblin in there. So that's kind of cool. So yeah, we'll see how Gold Goblin crosses paths with Venom. Then we have Spider-Man 2099 Dark Genesis, as it's got Punisher 2099 on there. This is just a fun little action flick type of comic. You know, turn your brains off for it. You got Carnage 2099 wreaking havoc, trying to take over the world. Uh, you know, he has to actually eat people constantly. He needs a feed of blood in order to stay alive. And we got all our 2099 characters in this comic book. All right. And then we got the reprint of Spider-Man uh, issue seven with Spider-Boy on the cover. So actually happy to have another copy of this now. So that's pretty cool. Then I wound up getting She-Hulk issue 13. I got the Spider-Verse uh, variant here. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool to see Jen Walters as a spider character hanging upside down on a lamp uh, traffic light post. And uh, the last issue was actually very good for She-Hulk. So it kind of bought some more time, right? Because I really love Jennifer Walters. And I feel like this book has potential, but it has just been lacking. But the last issue was really enjoyable. The artwork looks like it's a, it's like back on par again also. Uh, so we'll see what this has to offer. So looking forward to it. Then we have the Red Goblin issue four, decided to get the variant cover on this comic. Uh, really good looking cover uh, here. And the interior artwork is really good. And we get to see the struggles between young Normie Osborn uh, be this Red Goblin as, you know, it kind of corrupted him in the last issue and now he had to you know reel it in a little bit and his venom symbiote i should say carnage symbiote or red symbiote is called uh rascal if i remember correctly and it's been an interesting book i've really enjoyed it it's actually been better than i expected so looking forward to the next issue well then i guess i got a variant cover here so i got the spider verse variant for red goblin that's actually pretty cool not gonna lie then we got Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Issue 6, Carnage Reigns, Part 2 of 7. Carnage Reigns, Issue 1, was a very solid story. Uh, and I'm curious to see how this little crossover event goes. We have Scorpion back in the book as he's working for uh, Agent Gowl. It's like a, 
a suicide squad type of agency where he works for her and if he doesn't then he's going to get in trouble but if he does he'll get time cut you know he'll get his sentence cut and whatnot and then we just get to see i think in the last issue like uh carnage actually got his you know iron man armor or his extremio armor destroyed and now he's like all over the place i don't, I don't even know it was weird but I liked it. I actually really enjoyed it. So, yeah, there's that. Then we have the Hulk Annual Issue 1. This is going to show a preview of the new up-and-coming Hulk series. That's going to be hitting store shelves very soon. So, looking forward to this. And I think Hulk is going to be doing battle against Giganto uh, in this issue. So, here's some of the artwork there. That looks good. Good facial expressions and whatnot. I'm trying to see the Hulk. Here's Hulk right real quick right there. So, yeah, and here's some more art. So let's see if we can get, like, a preview of the, of the new series. Yeah, this is it. So here's kind of the preview, the artwork on what you can expect here also. So it looks very dark, right? So you guys going to be jumping on the new Hulk series? Let me know in the comments below. Then we get to continuation of Gunslinger. This is issue 20. When does this book not deliver? It's only $2.99. And it is so well drawn. I love this comic, man. Brett Booth is on top of his game. Probably some of the best artwork I've ever seen him do. Can't wait to read this newest issue. Then we have Guardians of the Galaxy. This is issue two. Kukamora cover. Really like that. As you get to see the reflection of like Star-Lord there. And we get to see our Guardians of the Galaxy. They were trying to save this species. And we get to see Groot fall coming, right? What happened to Groot? I guess that's the mystery of this comic book. There's some more of the artwork. And I enjoyed issue one. So we'll see what happens with issue two. This will probably be the very last issue I pick up of Fantastic Four. This is issue seven, also known as issue 700. Um, let's check out some of the art inside of this book. It might have to do with the main story. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the main story has been okay, but I just feel like there's no real direction uh, when it comes to the main book. So, I don't know. Like I said, we'll see how this one goes. Got some Doctor Doom in there, but this will probably be the last one I collect. I like all the characters on the cover, though. That's pretty neat. Then we have another new number one. We got uh, Danny Ketch Coats Rider. This is issue one. So very classic and iconic cover. Uh, reminds you of the 90s here. And if you've been reading Benjamin Percy's Ghost Rider, it's cool that we have a Danny, Co Danny Ketch story now as well to go alongside of it. So there's the artwork there. So looking forward to that one. Then of course, it's horror. So I had to pick up Jinx. A Cursed Life. This is issue one. So we'll see what this has. Um, I think this might be just a one shot. So here is the interior artwork here. So if you love Archie books, you know, you might want to check this out. And uh, if you love horror books, you might want to check it out. So we've got that. Then we have the Avengers. This is issue one. Here we go, guys. Jed McKay right in the Avengers. Check out the interior art. It definitely looks good. You know, even though, say for whatever reason, if issue one doesn't blow your mind out of the water, you might got to give this one a little bit of time because it's a team book and it needs to grow a little bit. Maybe give it a first story arc besides you before you make that judgment. Jed McKay, again, is a great writer. He's done some great stuff with some characters in the Marvel Universe. And then we got this cool looking book. This is called Arcade Kings. This is issue one. This is a pricey book. This is an $8 book. Is this just a one shot though? Uh, check this out though. Look at these funky colors, man. These, these awesome neon like colors. Looks like these kids are playing in an arcade. And uh, that's why I picked this up because it's just like, I remember going to the arcade and having competitions with my friends playing Street Fighter and stuff like that. So I'm really gonna dig this book. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun so there you guys have it there is the two day haul hopefully you guys enjoyed it and loved all the books i shared with you i want to know in the comments below what you picked up this week and of course whether it is in the comments below or in the facebook group and of course guys as always keep eyeing keep collecting but more importantly always read your comics guys hopefully you have a great new comic book day 
Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you real soon. Bye.